learning many of the suspects charged with domestic terrorism in Atlanta's anti-police riots are reportedly pampered and privileged children who don't even live in Georgia. Look at this. New York Post reporting that suspect Madeline Fiola was born and raised in a wealthy suburb outside of Portland. Ivan Ferguson, he's happy about this. He's an award-winning, classically trained clarinet player with a prestigious education in music and an award-winning smile. Emily Murphy previously <laughs> served as the at-large chair of, wait for it, Al Gore's Climate Reality Project, and Francis Carroll lived in his parents' multi-million dollar mansion in Maine before his arrest in Atlanta. Ivan is thrilled to be under He's arrest there. It. Speak Georgia co-founder Janelle King joins us now. Janelle, good morning to you. I mean, we're talking about some of the most privileged people in America fighting against the country that they so greatly benefited from. Yeah, and I, I, I'm still trying to figure out what exactly are they fighting against. But, you know, this is what happens when you take young people who um, are being bred into this whole notion of white guilt and this bleeding heart um, around issues that they have nothing to do with, that they weren't nowhere around, they were nowhere around when it actually took place. But this is what happens when you take these type of kids and then you tell them that there's a such thing as good trouble that they can get into. And then they feel like they can come into other cities and destroy the cities, destroy small businesses for the sake of um, whatever they want to call it, whether it's good trouble, we'll see what that is, or whether or not they are actually trying to um, pursue something or have a mission. I don't know what it is, but I do think that this is an issue. This is a major issue. But as Republicans, we have already seen this. And I think we are a little frustrated and tired of having to be the one side that's speaking out against it. Um, I am happy to see that our mayor, Mayor Dickens, is actually you know, putting this on the forefront and that he is standing firm against these type of acts and this type of behavior. Um, and, I, and that's why when he was elected, the first thing I said was I need him to be Mayor Dickens and not Dre, because you have to make sure that you're representing the entire city. And I did see that when he was speaking out at the press conference. Mm. Meantime, there's also this Florida Governor Ron DeSantis defending his decision to reject an AP African-American studies course for Florida schools after the White House called the move incomprehensible. Take a listen to the governor. This course on black history, what are one of, what's one of the lessons about? Queer theory. Now, who would say that an important part of black history is queer theory? That is somebody pushing an agenda on our kids. Is he right, Janelle? Oh, he's 100 percent correct. Um, and I think that him banning these type of concepts is the right thing to do. You know, particularly when I when I think about the black community, um, the black community is not in support of this. You know, I mean, the LGBTQ community has um, what I have said, I, I've said will say is they've hijacked um, our mission. They've hijacked the civil rights movement. They've hijacked a lot of the things that the black community has put forward um, and has kind of shown it ha, 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 operated as a Trojan horse during this time. And I think that that's what's happening right now. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not happy about um, the messaging, but I'm most excited about the fact that we have someone who's standing face to face to this. And I want to see more people do this. You have to hit it head on. There's no room for negotiation when it comes to this type of behavior. And when I think about what's happening, even when I hear that the trans community, a friend of mine posted that the trans community wants to cancel Aretha Franklin and, uh, and the song Natural Woman. And I'm thinking that's completely opposite of what the black community is supportive. of. You can't cancel Aretha. So when you really look yeah. at this from, from what it is, um, Governor DeSantis saw it as what it was, which was a Trojan horse. And he called it out. Yeah, fortunately, we have since learned uh, that that Aretha Franklin story was actually satire. But still, you just saw the reaction <laughs> to it. People just sort of jumped on it. And you realize, like, man, the fact that they would even be in somebody's yeah. head is insane, Carla. Yeah, Janelle, what do you yeah. think about this AP African-American studies course? Maybe Florida can replace it with something that's not so political? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? I wish that I could say that the satire is something that we are um, that that we shouldn't consider. But there's so many foolishness and foolish statements that are coming out um, of one thing after another. So I 100% think that we should um, think about this. I I am an advocate for teaching accurate history. And what I mean by that is let's tell it from the beginning to the end. Yeah. Let's not tell people, especially the black community, that you started with slavery and that we're ending with Jim Crow. That's not true. Um, we we let's talk about the Gilded Age. Let's talk about Reconstruction. Yeah. Let's right. talk about Booker T. Washington. There's so many things we can teach. It's a rich you know. history that does not involve queer studies. Janelle King, thank you very much. Janelle. Appreciate your time.
I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.